In this video, I will show you how to find the value of a that makes the function continuous everywhere. So looking at this piecewise function, we see that we have a polynomial to the left of three and a polynomial to the right of three. So therefore, we already know that the function is continuous to the left of three and continuous to the right of three. So the only possible point of discontinuity will be at three. So we need the limit as x approaches three from the left to equal the limit as x approaches three from the right to avoid the discontinuity. This just means that the function is approaching the same value from the left as it is from the right. Otherwise, we would have a discontinuity. But we know that as x approaches 3 from the left, the function is 2x minus 1. And as x approaches 3 from the right, the function is ax squared. So the left-sided limit must equal this right-sided limit. Both of these limits can be evaluated by direct substitution. So let's let x equal 3 in both expressions. That will give us 2 times 3 minus 1 must equal a times 3 squared. This is 6 minus 1, so that's 5. And of course, uh, 3 squared is 9. In fact, I'm going to put that 9 in front. And my 9s look a lot like a's, so I have to be very careful. So the value of a, if I divide both sides by 9, is going to be 5 ninths. So 5 ninths is the value of a that will allow the function to be continuous everywhere. Number 14, find the value of a that makes f of x continuous everywhere. Well, based on the second piece of the piecewise function, we know that the function has a value of 8 at x equals a. And the function is defined by this expression everywhere else. If this function is to be continuous, it has to be approaching the same value from the left and the right, and it has to have the same value at a. That would make the function continuous. Obviously, if the value of the function at a was something different, then what the function is approaching from the left and the right, then we would have this discontinuity. In other words, to avoid this kind of discontinuity, the limit of f of x as x approaches a has to equal the value of the function at a. We already know the value of the function at a is 8. But what about the limit as x approaches a? What about the limit from the left and from the right. Everywhere except for x equals a, the function is defined by this expression. So when we talk about the limit of f of x as x approaches a, we're really talking about the limit of this expression as x approaches a. So let's see if we can just simplify this down and plug it back in. We can definitely factor the numerator, the difference of two squares. So this will become x plus a times x minus a over x minus a. You're probably noticing that we have the same factor of x minus a in the numerator and denominator. These can be canceled out without changing the limit. So we have the limit as x approaches a of x plus a. So there's no reason why we can't just do direct substitution. Let's let x equal a and that will be the limit. So um, that will give us a plus a which is 2a. So we just found the limit of this expression and it turned out to be 2a. So that's the limit of the function so this is 2a. For the function to be continuous, 
the limit as we approach a has to equal the value of the function at a. So 2a must equal 8. So obviously if we divide both sides by 2, we find out that a must equal 4. Number 15 will be a bit more complex because we have to find the value of a and b that make h continuous everywhere. So looking at this piecewise function, we see that uh, the function is defined by this expression to the left of 3. It's defined by this expression to the right of 3. And it's defined by this expression at x equals 3. So according to the definition of continuity, the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right, which must equal the value of the function at 3. Let's pair these up two at a time, starting with the limit from the left must equal the value of the function at 3. So we have this, but we know that uh, as we approach 3 from the left, the function is defined by this expression. So we are really talking about the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of x to the third power minus 27 over x minus 3. Uh, we also know that h at 3 is equal to a. That's given by this green expression. So we can go ahead and set this equal to a, which ultimately is what, what we are solving for. Let's see if we can find the limit on this left-hand side. Let's start by factoring this difference of cubes. We're going to use that pattern that we learned in Algebra 2. When you factor the difference of two cubes, it's always going to factor as a binomial and then a trinomial. The binomial is just the cube root of each of these terms. So we have x minus 3. The beginning and the end of the trinomial will come from squaring both of these. So I will have x squared at the beginning and I will have plus 9 at the end. The middle term will be the product of these two. So I'm going, going to have 3x except it will always be the opposite sign. So if we have x minus 3 then I will have plus 3x. In the denominator, we still have our x minus 3. Notice that we have the same factor of x minus 3 in the numerator and the denominator. So we can remove those without changing the limit. So now we have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of uh, x squared plus 3x plus 9. Uh, don't forget that at every step of the way, we still have the right-hand side. This is equal to a. Um, but now we can go ahead and do direct substitution. Let's let x equal 3 and see what we get. So just showing my work here, we have uh, 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 9. And that is going to still equal a. This simplifies down to 27. So we found our first value. a is equal to 27. So we should be able to do something similar to find b. Let's go ahead and match up these two. As we set these two equal to each other, Remember that as we approach 3 from the right, the function is defined by bx squared. And again, the value of the function at 3 is supposed to be a. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is the same as the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of bx squared. And this should equal a, um, which we just found is 27. I'll substitute that in on the next step. But let's go ahead and find this limit. There's no reason why we can't do direct substitution right now. 
So um, this is going to be uh, b times 3 squared is equal to a, which was 27. All right, so this is just going to give us um, 9b is equal to 27. And if we divide both sides by 9, we get b is equal to 3. So these are the two values that will allow h of x to be continuous. Here's another one where we need to find the value of a and b. Let's take them two at a time. To the left of 0, the function is simply 3. To the right of 0, the function is defined by a plus cosine of pi x. So if the function is to be continuous, the limit uh, as x approaches 0 from the left must equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. But the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is simply 3. It's a constant. Now for the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, um, the function is defined by this expression, but we can just go ahead and use direct substitution. So let's let x equal 0, and this becomes a plus the cosine of pi times 0. Uh, so of course this is just going to be 3 is equal to a plus cosine of 0. We know that cosine is the x value on the unit circle, so the cosine at 0 is 1. So we have 3 is equal to a plus 1. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get a is equal to 2. So we're halfway there. That's our first constant. Now let's examine the transition between the second piece and the third piece. And we can see that it's all about what happens at 1. So to the left of 1, the function is defined by uh, this expression. And to the right of 1, it's defined by this expression. If the function is to be continuous, the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. Let's set that up. So I've set up here that the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. On the left side, the function is defined by this expression. And on the right side, it's defined by this expression. We can go ahead and evaluate both of these limits by direct substitution. Also keep in mind that we just found that the a value is equal to 2. So plugging that in, we get 2 plus the cosine um, pi times x. From direct substitution, x is 1, so that just leaves pi. And uh, if x is equal to 1 in this expression, we just have b plus 2. So let's see, what is the cosine of pi? Pi is over here on the left, where the x value will be negative 1. So the cosine of pi is negative 1. So this gives us 2 minus 1 is equal to b plus 2. So that means 1 is equal to b plus 2, which uh, if we subtract 2 from both sides, gives us b equals negative 1. And that's it. b is negative 1 and a is 2. Those are the values that allow the function to be continuous. Switching gears a bit, for these last two problems, we are sketching the graph of a function that meets certain criteria. So we're told that function f has a discontinuity at x equals 1, which is right here, uh, but the limit as x approaches 1 is equal to 2. I'm actually going to do the second part first. So if the limit um, as x approaches 1 is equal to 2, that means as we approach an x value of 1, the value of the function is getting closer and closer to 2. For this limit to exist, it has to be uh, approaching the same value from the left and 
from the right. The second part is easy. There's supposed to be a discontinuity at x equals 1. All I have to do is leave this as an open circle, and boom, there's a discontinuity. I could also put uh, a point somewhere else. That would still be a discontinuity, but I could just leave it as an open circle. So that's it for number 17. Okay, let's do one more of these sketches. So there is, again, supposed to be a discontinuity at x equals 1. Uh, then we have all of these criteria over here to the right. But let's break it down step by step. Let's start with this. g at 1 is equal to 2. So the value of the function at 1 is equal to 2. So I'm going to put a dot right here to represent that. What else do we know? The limit as x approaches 1 from the right is also equal to 2. So as we approach 1 from the right, we are approaching this value of 2. But yet there must be a discontinuity at x equals 1. For that to happen, um, something else has to be happening from the left. If the function approached that same value of 2 from the left, it would be continuous. So since we want a discontinuity at x equals 1, we can just make sure that the function approaches a different value as we come in here from the left. And there we have a jump discontinuity. That would do it. We also could have put an asymptote right here, something like that. In fact, you know what, just to be, just for fun, um, let's put an asymptote right here. All right, there are many correct answers, so here's another one. Um, from the left, my function is coming in and approaching this asymptote. So there you go. There's two different possible solutions for problem number 18.